You ready? Let's go. Teach me grappling. What's up, guys? Today, I've got my buddy here. This is Cliff Pennick. Uh, multiple time judo champion. He's competed internationally. He's got over 50 years of judo experience in judo. Judo. Is this one of those judo jokes like, judo know if I have a knife? Judo know if I have a gun. All right. <laughs> Can you show me some, uh, some judo? Sure. All right. Hey, you know what Cliff's going to do? I think I have an Asodogar video somewhere on my channel. I think. I don't remember. Made so many videos. I can't remember what I've taught. But Cliff is the man. He's going to give some, some great details for Asodogari and uh, maybe two different ones, like more like a traditional and then more of, of a competitive Asodogari, right? You got okay. It. So show me, how would you, how would you start training me? Here, let's come over here actually in the red. And I think this is probably a good contrast. So first of all, for a basic Asodogari, traditional, what you want to do is try to get your competitive off balance on their, I'm a righty, so on his right leg. So what I want to try to do, just to look at this for either gi or no gi, I used to like holding from the top and grabbing, if he had a gi, from the sleeve and the collar. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is put your opponent's weight all on this leg. In a basic Osoto guard, what you want to think about is shoulder to shoulder and stepping in. So I want to be here. I want to step in, shoulder to shoulder. So in my stance, I was a, I'm a righty, so I want to stand here, I step one step with my left, so now it's like we have three legs, and I'm going to bring up my leg, my right leg. If you look at my leg, I went in like in a 45 degree angle, almost like a flipper. My foot is not here, I need it to be here, okay? So when I step in, one, and I just drag it. If you was able to get closer, you can hear my toes dragging across the mat. It's very important. Then when I come back down, it's going to drag across the mat. So I know that I have my foot in, in a flipper position. So if we can or can, just listen. Okay, so a Soto guard is one of those throws that you can really hurt your opponent's knee when you train. So what I, I've got a bad knee right now. So, so that's <laughs> good so discussion. I, so when I do Uchi Komi, I don't want to step in and be kicking my opponent's Leg hey, every time. What, what's a uchikomi? What is that? I'm thinking too far. Yeah, I'm thinking too much. <laughs> no, no, just to explain. Guys, this is how you practice. Uchikomi, you can look at it kind of American or not. Like if you think of boxing, shadow boxing. So you're just going through repetition, going through like just shadow uchikomi, shadow of movement. Okay? Going so, through the move, drilling the technique without resistance. Right? So right. I'm going to stand here. And if you listen, you'll hear my shoulder pop in the shoulder. Go ahead, come a little closer and get that sound. Yeah. And I want to look down at the mat. So when I'm doing my uchi comis, I don't want to do a finishing every time. So I just step in and I pop. Step out, and pop in. Pop yeah. in. And then on the last one, I sweep all the way through. Okay, again, sweeping all the way through. Pop in, one, each, knee. Sound. Chi. Fifth one. Go. Okay, now I'm getting that, what I'm thinking in my mind is like a teeter-totter. My leg goes up. When this goes back, my head goes down. And I would have con contact shoulder to shoulder. Because ultimately, I'm not throwing him backwards. I'm throwing like in a 45 degree angle. Okay? So that's looking at our basic muscle body. Now, once you get into competition, you're more equally here, you know what? I, I'm sorry, stop it. Do it. I need you. I know you're getting old and my knee's screwed up, but can you throw me once just so they can see it? Okay. Because a lot of people, they may not even. Alright, so here I am. Uh, yeah, this is fun. Okay, so to get a full fit Osoto guard, sometimes it's, it's good to use a crash mat because when you actually do Osoto, Hey, you leave your feet, you pile them into the mat. Again, this is my training partner, I don't want to kill him. So pretty much, I want to get close enough to the mat that I can come to the side, okay? I come to the side because I'm going to throw him down on here. And I want to be safe with my opponent. So in this position, so my head doesn't go up. This position, as I step in, chest to chest, I bring my foot up, head down, swing the leg back. That was a nice little slide right there we did. So again, 
Osota guy, standard basic this position. Shoulders, shoulders, up in the air. Bringing my foot up. As this go, as my head goes down, I swing my leg. Yeah. Competition, I would land on top of them so I can finish if it's not a full point. But here, just working out, I want to take care of my partner. Okay. All right, so now back to when you're, you're like more competitive, the other guy kind of knows what he's doing, he's a little more balanced, maybe he's a wrestler or he knows something. So with that in mind, you see more uh, higher level of Sotogari. With me coming up in the judo world, we call it Hapi Osotogari. So pretty much what you're doing, you're going all the way away from the traditional. Again, traditional, one, here, go down, okay? Hopping up so guard, use them catching my opponent bent over. And what I want to do, I want to cook his leg, okay? I'm going to here, make sure I have a good distance, I'm going to clip his leg. So that's how I'm going to break him down. Once I clip his leg, I'm going to hop. Close the distance, head down, and I throw. Okay? So again, from this position, I clip the back of the leg, simultaneously start hopping, hopping, closing the distance, and I finish. So this is what this throw looks like, hopping, and so to guard it, uh, more for higher level judo. So here, 99% of the time when you hop and so to guard it, you're gonna land on your opponent because you want to drive him down into the mat. That's awesome. one, more, one more time. Here, I know where my distance is. I reach out, I start hopping. Closing the distance, head down and driving into the mat. Again, for safety, which you saw me, because of the cross mat, my head went down. I don't want to drive my head down to the mat. I'm going to turn it like I'm doing okay me. And I'm just going to tuck my head to the side. Okay, like a roll, right? Fall, oh, yeah. Um, so we got these two different ones. And then uh, what I want to touch on, on the subject, is most people will say, well, give me the one that's going to work on the competitive one. Because I want, I'm, I'm in a gym and I'm fighting guys that are like, you know, they're tough, they're strong, they have experience, and they're not just nobodies. So give me that one. But at the same time, what comes to mind for me, like I just got this comment from someone. Someone said, can you teach me? I got a phone call from a gentleman. And he said, hey, I really wanna do private lessons with you, Coach Brian. Can you give me a takedown? I'm like 50 years old. I'm like 45, 50 years old. Can you give me a takedown that I can do where I don't have to wrestle and like shoot to my knee? I don't have to like get dirty on the ground. I just want something real simple where I could take a guy down if I get in a situation on the street. And what that brings me to think about is, guys, if you're fighting a guy on the street, and you, we don't want to get in fights, but the whole point is, if, if, if I was the bad guy and I grabbed Coach Cliff and I was trying to grab him, they don't, they're not going to be like this. They're not going to approach like, slap hands, all right, let's, you know, we're grappling and stuff where he might need that hopping osoto. If a guy doesn't know what he's doing and he's like, hey man, what's going on? He stands up right here. Coach, you could just do the basic. The basic could work just simple. Any kind of grip he wants, he could just throw me. If I don't have balance, I'm not a trained guy, that, that that's a very viable move for you. And it's simple to learn. You don't have to have all that athleticism or anything. Just, just a thought to, to go back to the uh, hopping osoto gari for the more higher level players. The philosophy that I had when I was looking at, when I did this in competition, first of all, if my opponent bends over, he's telling me two things. One, I'm tired, so now I'm gonna start going after him. If he's not tired and he's bending over and it's early in the match, if he's later in the match, he's probably telling me he's tired. So now I'm gonna find my inner strength and I'm just gonna start going after him. Or if it's the beginning of the match, what he's telling me, he's scared of me. He's in a defensive position and he's holding me off, okay? So I might have to do some combinations before I get into that Osoto Gari or Hapano Osoto Gari. But that's two things that you're looking for in your opponent in competition. If he's bend over, pretty much he's either in a defensive position or he's tired. So in the match, if he's tired, that's when you want to really explode here 
and pop and hit it real quick. Okay, so remember those two key points and higher level competition. If your opponent's bent over, 90% of the time they're either tired or they're scared of you. So take mm -hmm. advantage of that. Yeah, beautiful. All right, coach, is that all you have? That's it. Okay, beautiful. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that uh, Osoragari tutorial from Coach Cliff. Uh, again, I, this is a good friend of mine. He's been, he and I, we've known each other how long now? Maybe like 13, 14 yeah. years, something like that. And, um, you know, he always, when he drops by, I got to get him to like teach my guys something. Because when people have 50 years on a mat with experience, it's like they always have something. And I know deeply that he can help me. Even though I have a lot of experience, he can teach me something. Let alone all the stuff that he showed my guys tonight. I was so like happy that you guys you came today. So thank you so much. No, and then anytime. and then I said before you leave, we got to give some of this to all you guys out there that watch on the channel. So thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed Coach Cliff. Please click that link down below at Patreon, PayPal, contribute to this channel. Remember our YouTube membership. If you guys want to become a member, you can do that. You can donate between like $2, $5, $10 or more and uh, become a part of our membership and contribute to this channel. That's all I have. Anytime you got a judo question, I want to know some kind of technique, mm -hmm. reach out to Brian. I come down and show it. There you go. There you go. And especially like I'm very rudimentary with my judo knowledge. So anytime, if you guys ask a, a, a more detailed question, this is the man that I go to. So thank you. I appreciate you. We'll see you guys next time with more great stuff.